Most people don't like spiders, and yet despite that, Spider-Man is a superhero that has become a modern day phenomenon. This is because we love anything supernatural. As human beings, we're bound by gravity, and there are not too many of us who get to defy it. Only a few climb vertical walls. Others get to fly through space. But Spider-Man can do all these things with ease, and it's exciting. It's inspiring when our superhero is battling evil. But surprise, as with much that comes out of the entertainment industry, there's more here than meets the eye. We're going to listen to Marvel Comics writers as they talk about God and let us in on where they get their inspiration. Listen as this writer speaks about their moral structure and how they get it without God, whom he refers to as the Sky Bully. How do we codify our moral structure without the Sky Bully looking down on us, telling us what we're supposed to do. I found out that if you do these things that you're told by Alistair Crowley, by Wilson, by all these people we read and all these people we've been consuming. I found out that if you do these things that you're told by Alistair Crowley, by Wilson. Just so you know, Alistair Crowley died in 1947. He rejected his Christian Plymouth Brethren upbringing and became deeply involved in the occult. While in Egypt, Crowley claimed to have contacted a supernatural entity, that is a demon, who provided him with what he called the Book of the Law, a text which declares the essence of Satanism's do what thou wilt. Assuming if you actually do what they say, things happen, and it works. This magic works. What they call magic is the contacting of demons. Works. Very frightening at first, when I realized that, oh, shit, this is a actually a demon. I'd thought that they were kind of hypothetical, but this doesn't seem to be hypothetical. Another writer found it incredulous that Marvel said okay to rape and murder. For some reason, the writers had free reign. Well, rape murder in a superhero comic. To this day, I'm still surprised that, that Marvel was able to just say okay. They're more than aware that there's an invisible and sticky web behind Spider-Man that ensnares human beings. You have to look at Grant's work as like, a, it's a bullet with a candy coating. You know what I mean? It's the kind of thing that a, 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 you know, a kid can read it, they're, you know, and, the, and the, their parents will never be the wiser that their kid's getting their mind good and f As Christians, we know that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against demonic forces, the powers that inhabit this evil world. We also know that it's only the gospel that can free sinners from the web of sin and death something the Bible refers to as the sneer of the devil, having been taken captive by him to do his will. Now watch this. Okay, do you think there's an afterlife? Yeah. What do you think? Um, I would say, I think... There's like, I believe like in the multiverse. So like, I think, cause like we're Spider-Man from different universes. So like when we die, we'll like turn into like another variation of that Spider-Man. Like I could be like a spider dog mm. in another world. You know what I mean? Yeah. Do you believe in God's existence? Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, I, I think so, yeah. yeah. What do you think? Yeah, yeah um, I definitely, uh, I don't know if there's an afterlife or a parallel life, you know? I don't know if I'm going to die and then wake up as myself just in a different universe. Do you believe the Bible? Um, I've never read it. Yeah, it says it's appointed a man wants to die. Death is an appointment that God's given you because you've sinned against him. The Bible says the wages of sin is death. God is paying you in death for your sins. In other words, there's a bug spray that's going to kill all of you unless you get out of its way. You think there's an afterlife? Uh, I do believe so. And what I do you think? Yes. What do you think about Jesus? Do you think he spoke the truth? Yes. Yes, I do. I think Jesus is a pretty cool guy, yeah. Okay, let me quote from him and get your thoughts on it, okay? Okay. Jesus said, whoever looks at a woman and lusts for her has committed adultery already with her in his heart. Have you ever looked at a woman with lust? No, I stay loyal to my Mary Jane. When did you last look at pornography? Never. What about you? I'm a virgin. You looked at pornography? <laughs> I mean, I, I looked at it like, like I... <laughs> so anyway, that's looking with lust. Um, I watch porn every day. I can't stop. It's, I, I try, but I, I just can't stop. It's well, just, 
Jesus said, he that serves sin is a slave of sin, and it certainly is true about pornography. It's addictive. So here's a few more questions. Have you guys kept the Ten Commandments? Have you lied? Yes. You? In my life, yeah. Yeah. Yes. Ever stolen something? Yes. Um, have you ever used God's name in vain? No. I don't think so. I type out, oh my gosh. I don't, mm. I don't see And what about you? Use God's name in vain? I try not to. You have? Yes. Okay. Oh, well, here's a question for you. Yeah, he today did. Um, would you use your mother's name as a cuss word? Maybe. <laughs> You've just broken the fifth commandment. The Bible says, honor your father and mother. Never do that with your mother's name. So, guys, here's a summation. But most of you admitted that you're lying thieves, blasphemers, and adulterers at heart. So if, if God judges you by the Ten Commandments on Judgment Day, you're going to be innocent or guilty. Is there in between? No, there's no in between. Innocent or guilty, like a court of law. Oh, uh, guilty. I don't know. I'm kind of a friendly neighborhood Spider-Man, so I think he uh, might give me a break there. Hey guys, I'm serious about this. You may think it's just a joke, but this is your life. This is your eternity. So would you be innocent or guilty? Probably guilty. Oh, 100% guilty. I'm locked up. Uh, I don't believe that it's up for me to decide. I believe that it is. Well, you can God. figure if you're going to be guilty or not, knowing you've broken the commandments. So if you're guilty, will you go to heaven or hell? If you're guilty, you can go to hell, right? Yeah, the Bible says all liars have their part in the lake of fire. No thief. No blasphemer, no adulterer will inherit God's kingdom. What did God do for guilty sinners so we wouldn't have to go to hell? Did he like die for us? Yeah, Jesus died on the cross. Most people know that, but they don't know this. The Ten Commandments are called the moral law. You and I broke the law, Jesus paid the fine. That's what happened on the cross. If you're in court and someone pays your fine, a judge can legally let you go. If you've got speeding fines, someone pays them, you can say you're out of here because someone paid your fine and you can do that which is legal and right and just. And what God did through Christ was legally pay for our sins so we could walk on Judgment Day, so God could take the death sentence off us and grant us everlasting life as a free gift. And after Jesus suffered for us, paid the fine, he rose from the dead, defeated death, and if you guys simply repent of your sins and trust in Christ, you've got a promise from the God who cannot lie that he'll forgive your sins and grant you everlasting life as a free gift. Yeah. He'll release you from that bondage of sin and death if you repent and trust in the Savior. So you guys going to think about what we talked about? Uh, 100% sure. I'll dream about it. And will you think about it too? Yes. Like I said, you guys, you've been pretty good for guys wearing masks that you didn't sort of joke through the whole thing. So I appreciate your patience with me and your honesty. Do you have a Bible at home? Yes. 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 Okay, dust it off and open it up because it's God's love letter for you. He takes no pleasure in your death. He wants you to repent, find everlasting life, and be saved from hell. And so do I. And that's why I'm talking to you so seriously. Can I give you guys a book that I wrote, or is it going to be difficult for you to carry? Oh, we got it. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. I can. Okay. Give me yeah. a Don't forget to subscribe and click on the notification bell and make sure you don't miss the Living Waters podcast. The Evidence Study Bible contains fascinating information on Bible prophecy for cults and different religions, atheism, apologetics, and biblical archaeology. It also contains hundreds of quality quotes, fascinating articles, amazing scientific facts in the Bible, and so much more. It even includes answers to 200 of the most commonly asked questions of the Christian faith. The Evidence Study Bible will thoroughly enrich your trust in God and in His precious Word. Get yours at livingwaters.com. Approaching a stranger is a little bit scary for most of us. That's why we've produced the Starter Kit. It contains four of our most popular gospel tracks. This is 101 of the world's funniest one-liners. These really are funny, and the gospel is hidden way inside. It's so easy to give out. You simply say, this is 101 of the world's funniest one-liners. It'll cheer up your day. This is the good person test. It's exactly what I say to people in comic form, and who can resist a comic? This is the Ten Commandments coin with a gospel on the back. I tossed a handful to teenagers once on a sidewalk and watched them fight over them. It's a great gift to give to anyone. And of course, our ever popular million dollar bill. Just say, did you get your million? And watch people's faces light up.
There's a total of 350 tracks in the starter kit. Get yours today at livingwaters.com.